Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we are going to further discuss the properties of Fourier transform. We have already discussed the two, two properties of Fourier transform which are linearity and conjugation. Now in this lecture, we are going to study some more properties of Fourier transform. The third property is the duality property. Now according to the duality property, for example, if we have a signal G of T and its Fourier transform is G of F which is in frequency domain then the Fourier transform of the signal G of T is going to be equal to G of minus F. So we have written the statement here that the duality property states that if the Fourier transform of G of, G of T which is a time domain signal is G of F then the Fourier transform of G of T with f replaced by t is the g of minus f which is the original time domain signal with, with t replaced by f. So here we have only replaced the t by minus f and we are going to uh, and we got the Fourier transform of the g of t. Similarly if we have the uh, omega domain which is the angular frequency domains for example again I have a signal g of t whose Fourier transform is again in omega domain this will be j of omega. So then to find the Fourier transform of G of T, we are going to have 2 pi G of minus omega. So again this T has been replaced by minus omega and because of this omega we are also having the 2 pi term over here. So if the Fourier transform of G of T is G of F, then the Fourier transform of capital G of T is, uh, is G of minus F which is the original time domain signal with, with t replaced by minus f. So this t has been replaced by minus f and we are getting the Fourier transform of that signal. Now we can do this by an example. We have already studied in our previous class that the Fourier transform of the signal rectangular function rectangular t by ta was equal to the Fourier transform of this function, this is my function g of t, so let me call this the g of t. This is my function g of t and this uh, Fourier transform was equal to ta into think omega ta divided by 2. So this is now my g of omega. Now if you are asked to find the Fourier transform of ta, think of t ta divided by 2. If you can have a look now here we have replaced this omega by t. So this is actually now my g of t. This, this portion is actually now my g of t. So this is my g of t. Now according to this definition the Fourier transform of this g of t will be 2 pi into g of minus omega. And this is my g of t. So I am going to, so the Fourier transform of this function will be equal to 2 pi minus t by divided by ta. So we have 2 pi term over here and then we are going to have the rectangular function. I am going to write the rectangular function over here. So let me write it again. We are going to have a rectangular function as well. So this will be 2 pi and then the pictorial notation of the rectangular function and this will be minus t by pi. So here we have multiplied this 2 pi n with minus omega we have just replaced this by minus t. So that is why we are going to have this uh, result. And because this rectangular function is an even function, so we can also write it as 2 pi and again rectangular of t divided by ta because this is a even function. So we have used this duality property to find the result of this function. This is my g of t, this is my g of omega. And this is my capital G of t and its result was 2 pi into g of minus omega. So the minus omega is actually this thing so that's why we got this result over here. Now next is time reversal property. So according to the time reversal property if I have again a signal which is g of t and its Laplace transform is g of omega and then if I time reverse the signal that is that if I have g of minus t then its Fourier transform will be equal to g of minus omega. So we can do this by an example. For example, we know that the Fourier transform of the signal e power minus a t u of t is 1 divided by a plus j omega. 
So this is actually my g of t. I'm going to label this as g of t. This is my g of t. And this is my g of omega. Now for the g of minus t. For the g of minus t, I'm going to have e power a t u of minus t. So this is my actually g of minus t. I'm going to write over here. This is actually now my g of minus t. Because here g of t I have plus t is equal to minus t. Now this function result is going to be equal to g of minus omega. So now we are going to have g of minus omega which will actually be equal to 1 divided by a minus j omega. So in place of omega we are going to have minus omega so this will be this result. So by using the time reversal property we have found the Fourier transform of this function. Next is the time scaling property. Now the time scaling property can be given as for example again we have a function g of t whose again Fourier transform of is g of omega. Now if we have a function which is a time scale which is for example g of a t so this result now in Fourier its Fourier transform will be equal to 1 divided by a magnitude capital G of omega by a. So here we can conclude that the time compression of a signal results in its spectral expansion. That is time compression results in frequency expansion. Similarly time exp expansion of a signal results in spectral compression. Now we can understand this by this diagram. For example when we have the rectangular function t by ta because the weight of the pulse in this case is ta. The magnitude is 1. So if we take the Fourier transform of this function, we have already defined the Fourier transform of this function which was ta sinc of omega ta divided by 2. So now if we find the zero crossing, we need to equate this argument to plus minus n phi. So we need to equate omega ta divided by 2 to plus minus n phi. Which means that we are going to have omega ta is equal to plus minus 2 n phi. Which means that we are going to have omega is equal to plus minus 2 n phi divided by ta. So the zero crossing this is going to be my magnitude of 1. The zero crossing will be plus minus 2 n pi divided by ta. So for example this is my 2 pi divided by ta and then this is my 4 pi divided by ta and this is my 6 pi divided by ta. Similarly for negative cases this is my minus 2 pi divided by ta. This is my minus 4 pi divided by ta. And this is my minus 6 pi divided by ta. Now if we have a function which is expanded in the time domain. For example if you can have a look here. This is again the rectangular function. But now the weight of this rectangular function is twice of this. So we are going to have 2 ta in the denominator in that case. Because the denominator indicates the weight of this function. Of this rectangular function. Now again using this formula. We are going to find the Fourier transform of this function which will be equal to 2 ta multiplied by sin omega sine of omega ta. Now to find the zero crossing again this argument is going to be equated to zero. So we are going to have omega ta is equal to plus minus n pi which means that omega will be equal to plus minus n pi divided by ta. So this is going to be equal to my first crossing will be equal to pi by ta then my second crossing will be equal to 2 pi divided by ta and then my third crossing will be equal to 3 pi divided by ta. Similarly here this is going to be minus pi divided by ta and minus 2 pi divided by ta and then minus 3 pi divided by ta. So this has now been compressed in frequency domain. So we have expanded this signal in time domain again the amplitude is 1 over here. So that signal when we expanded the signal in time domain that signal has been compressed in the frequency domain. So if you talk about the magnitude this will be our 2 ta magnitude and this will be ta magnitude. But if you look at this frequency expansion if you look at this omega this signal has been compressed with respect to this signal. So expansion in time domain results in compression in frequency domain.